This is DeSalini, and uh, welcome to episode 7 of 90s Overlooked Underhood. Hey, how's it going? So, in this episode, it's finally time to tackle that big early 90s uh, elephant in the room, which is shoegaze. I've probably mentioned it in passing a few times. But um, I'd like to talk today about two bands and their albums, which, uh, according to my research, happen to have been released on exactly the same day. And I think you would probably consider these uh, albums maybe uh, outliers in the shoegaze canon. But... Um, I'm firmly of the opinion that, that the best shoegaze uh, records of that period would were generally uh, the EPs that, that bands were releasing. Um, in fact, I'd, I'd say I, I, I think the, the two great records that really bookmark the uh, peak of the shoegaze period would be the two My Bloody Valentine albums. So that would be... Um, isn't anything from 1988 through to uh, Loveless at the tail end of 91, which was kind of like the... Loveless was pretty much the high watermark for for this kind of iteration of the genre. And I, I think what happened is that because basically my bloody Valentine had laid down such a huge marker with Loveless that um, bands either had to kind of respond to it by kind of trying to synthesize what they saw as the best elements of it, or they started to branch a little further out and kind of push the boundaries of the music they were making um, beyond shoegaze and to try and bring in other elements of other genre, other musical styles. Um, and I think we have two examples of that in the albums I've chosen today. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to look at Moose's album, XYZ, which was released in September of 1992. Uh, so um, Moose were one of the kind of earliest of the, the first wave of shoegaze bands. Um, so we're talking bands like, um, whilst excluding My Bloody Valentine, bands like Ride, Lush, The Pale Saints, Slow Dive, Chapter House, uh, possibly even Swerve Driver. Um, Moose formed in 1990. Uh, basically around the core, the core duo of the band was uh, Russell Yates and Kev McKillop. In fact, um, interesting point about Moose. Um, it was a journalist from the music magazine Sounds uh, who first coined the term shoegazing uh, in response to seeing Moose live. He was writing a live review of a Moose show. And uh, I believe that is the first instance of someone saying the word shoegazing or using the word shoegazing in any context. So um, they have some kind of historical significance in that way, even if they had very little to do with that. Um, but their first releases were were EPs. Um, I think the, the, the kind of the golden period for EPs at this time was that period from 1992, kind of 91, where you would have, you know, key EPs by bands like Ride, uh, like the Pale Saints, their Sight of You EP, I think it was called. Maybe that was just the lead track. Um, Bleach, who are kind of a, a second tier shoegaze band, but they released a couple of really good EPs, the Snag and the Eclipse EPs in this period. Um, and even Chapter House were there their debut EP, which was Freefall. Um, but Moose were amongst uh, that first wave um, with their EPs uh, Jack and Cool Breeze, which both picked up lots of um, music press coverage. I think there were singles of the week in various uh, publications. I think in a lot of ways, the, the, the lead tracks off the Jack and the Suzanne uh, EPs are kind of archetypal shoegaze. Um, it's what you would play to someone if you wanted to show them what shoegaze probably was. Uh, by the time of their third EP, the reprise EP, 
you could see that they were starting to shift. They were refining their sound. And they were finding kind of more sunnier, kind of an acoustic side. More poppy, kind of um, almost country-tinged pop sounds. Um, yeah, almost as if they were trying to incorporate kind of uh, like a vibe of like 60s, almost an easy listening kind of 60s vibe. Things like, you know, the classic songwriting of uh, Burt Bacharach or Jimmy Webb. Um, you know, replete with, you know, syrupy strings and, uh, you know, even whistling and things like that. And um, it was it was quite a quite a bold move whilst show, shoegaze was kind of still in certain circles, still, uh, you know, a viable thing going on. But XYZ, um, yeah, it was produced by Mitch Easter, who is most probably well known for his work on the early R.E.M. albums. And yeah, it's th this this is poppier and brighter and cleaner and with far less heavily affected guitars than you would have heard in from a shoegaze band up to this point. Uh, some key tracks. Um, the opening single from the album was uh, Little Bird, um, which is just a pure jangly, bright pop song. Plenty of strings. L literally, there are zero shoegaze elements present, but it's it's a really good kind of indie pop song um, of that era. Um, it just happens to have this kind of very bright and breezy kind of 60s um, brill building feel almost. Um, a few other tracks on, on side one, uh, Polly and uh, and Sometimes Loving is the Hardest Thing. Um, they both managed to kind of wedge together this the kind of the, the classic kind of skyscraping kind of blankets of affected guitar into kind of quite wistful, simple pop songs, certainly more traditional pop songs than all the shoegaze bands had really been doing up to this point. Um, I mean, even with sometimes loving is the hardest thing. It has that classic kind of shoegaze kind of whiteout towards the end where, where, where the, the guitars build and build and just 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 smother the song towards the end. It, it, it's a really great song. Uh, side two opens with uh, Soon is Never Soon Enough, which, again, they push the pop music angle to the fore. And this one actually also features uh, backing vocals by the late uh, Dolores O'Riordan of the Cranberries, who they toured with. Um, at least once. I, I certainly saw both bands playing on the same belt once. And I think the closest they ever got to kind of trying to replicate the sound of the EPs again on this album, because it is a very different sound for them, is on the track Screaming on side two, which is completely underpinned by this kind of almost bubbling, frothy, kind of flanged bed of guitar noise and feedback going on. Um, so if you like shoegaze music of this period, but you're prepared to kind of um, give the poppier elements of Moose a chance, you'll find a lot to like in this album. Uh, it's a good record. So the uh, second uh, record I would like to talk about today is Shot Forth Self-Living by Medicine as I said, released on apparently the same day as the Moose album we were just talking about. So Medicine, I think, are one of that rare brand of US shoegaze bands. Um, and by that, I mean literally uh, at the time of that first UK wave. Shoegaze has experienced a bit of a revival since, and you see bands from all over the world using elements of that shoegaze or dream pop sound. But um, at that early period of the 90s, uh, it was the music seemed to be heavily centred around the UK. But Medicine were one of the few US shoegaze bands. I think others you would probably uh, include would be the Drop 19s, uh, the Swirlies, definitely. Um, some of the early material by The Lilies, 
and there's one other smashing orange is another one that 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 comes to mind the one thing however that did also tie all these bands together was that they sonically were all very very indebted to the sound of my bloody valentine kevin shields cast a very large shadow over the output of all of these bands and medicine medicine are no exception but it's a good record. I think if you are looking for a shoegaze record that you maybe haven't heard before and you really like my bloody Valentine, you will enjoy Shot Forth Self Living. So some of the tracks. Um, one more is the opener. And it literally comes straight in uh, hearing out of the stalls with this painful, piercing burst of feedback. Um, I wish you, this kind of steady beat gradually forms and this kind of really odd rising and falling guitar figure, guitar pattern comes. Um, the vocals from uh, Brad Laner and Beth Thompson are very, very boy-girl, shoegaze, very MBV-like. But it's a good opener. It, it kind of really sets the scene for the album. Um, and indeed, the next couple of tracks, uh, Aruka and uh, uh, Defective, they, 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 they follow a very similar recipe. It is very, very um, redolent of uh, MBV. By the time Medicine get to uh, Sweet Explosion, it uses um, this kind of tremoloed guitar line, um, which weaves in, in and out of this kind of. It's kind of much more of a electronic hi-hat kind of danceable rhythm um and this is the point where I, I think i'm reminded more of another shoegaze band um of the time which would be curve who were always using kind of more uh synthetic sounding rhythms uh yeah uh, this one's definitely more kind of aimed with the possibility of dancing to it in mind which you couldn't say about every shoegaze record and I think by the album closer Christmas song they, they finally start finding something a little different um, it's just heavier slower more kind of a pounding sound it's almost got I mean the drums almost have this kind of classic rock kind of John Bonham Led Zeppelin kind of heaviness going on in them um, over the top of this kind of um, heavily layered kind of multiple kind of squiggly feeding back guitar lines. Um, it's it's a real kind of, uh, it's a kind of quite a relief and a diversion at the end that they kind of changed the pace, changed down a gear and found something that is identifiably different and their own sound, I think. As I said, I don't think shoegaze as a genre is best represented by the albums that came out. I think a lot of the EPs that came out around the time give you a better feel for the sound and the ethos of the whole kind of movement. But Shot Forth Self Living is, if you like My Bloody Valentine, you'll probably enjoy this record. So, as ever, some suggestions. Um, you know the drill. I hope you'll join me again next time for another episode of 90s Overlooked and Heard. Take care.